Hey guys, happy Saturday. Um, so I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this show. It's called Game of Thrones. I understand that it might be a little popular. I've never seen it before in my life. And my girlfriend was like, coming over, we're gonna order takeout, we can find a movie on TV, da da da, da. I told her I have HBO, she goes, <gasps> Game of Thrones. I said, man, I've never seen that. I don't know if I want anything to do with that. I don't get it. And she goes, well, Carolyn, that's because you haven't watched it yet. So we watched it, and we watched the first episode, and then we saw the boy get pushed out the window or the wall, whatever. And her boyfriend calls, and she goes, yeah, I got her. I got her when they pushed him out, pushed him off the wall. And they did. They got me a little bit. So we watched the second episode right away, and um, we'll see how it goes from there. I, I vowed to her not to watch it without her. She'd like to rewatch the entire series. Um, let's see if I can keep that promise. <clears throat> We're scheduled tomorrow for another day, so I'll keep you posted on that. Today is Saturday, April 20th, and I just want to give you guys um, a heads up for You Are a Badass. They group Saturday and Sunday together. Sorry, that was my mom. I uh, went to the SPCA Broward County Humane Society and I think I got a dog. I told you guys I probably shouldn't have. Probably shouldn't at that time. But I think I did. Meaning I signed the adoption papers and they'll call me on Tuesday or Wednesday for me to come pick it up. It's a big dog. It's probably 80 pounds. Okay, you are a badass. We throw a wet bank blanket of ho hummery, ho hummery, over our lives when we live in fear of what others might think, instead of in celebration of who we are. Hmm. So when we're consumed in the fear of what other people think of us, we bring doubt instead of celebrating who we are. You know, the dog is a perfect example of this. My, my dad and his wife don't think it's a good idea. And I understand their point of view. I travel a lot, I go to school full time, I work full time, you know. Um, it seems like my life is really full, but I've been missing that companionship. Um, and this is an older dog. I think that he could really benefit from a loving home. And granted, I don't have the best track record with dogs, you know, but, um, I'm making new memories for my parents, for myself, for my son, for my brother, you know, and that's what it is. It's about reshaping um, our lives and saying that just because that's history's evidence doesn't mean it has to be today's evidence, right? Uh, a quote that I really like, I don't know if it's a quote, maybe I made it up, I, I really don't know, but um, our choices today become our history. I can't even remember the way I word it normally. That's the gist of it. You know, <clears throat> whatever I did today is now my past. You know, whatever I did at 10 a.m. Is, is now the past, right? It, it's, it's a version of my past. So if I just keep making those solid decisions day in, day out, moving forward, my, my past is gonna be rewritten, right? And that's the goal to move forward so that we have this past evidence of solid decision making. You know, so my, my dad's maybe not very supportive of getting a dog. I know that he loves dogs and I know that he wants me to be happy, but again, my, my past history has shown that I, I don't have the capacity to care for an animal. But again, this is a new This is a new experience for me, you know, I'm, I'm two years sober. And I think that I really thoroughly thought this through. And when I when I really lay my schedule down, I gave myself this month to consider, you know, when I'm home, when I'm not home, what dog care would look like, you know, the financial burden of it. 
and I can I can afford it. I can handle it. I, I spend more time at home than people realize. Um, I think people just think I'm really busy because my nights are really busy. You know, that's usually the time that people have off because they work during the day. And unfortunately, my schedule is reversed. So they don't see the hours that I spend at home during the day. And, and that's okay. They don't need to because I know that this is a, a personal decision. And I don't need to um, let the fear of other people's opinions take over me. Okay, April 20th. Oh, yeah, it's 420. Happy 420 to all you potheads. I have to show you something really quick. The Illinois Department of Transportation has a sense of humor, and I think it's very funny. Another reason why I love being from Illinois, I love being from Chicago. Let's see if you can read this. We hear that there's some sort of significance with tomorrow's date, so let us be blunt, get it? We'd appreciate it if you let a sober friend pick up the Funyuns. Come on guys, that's pretty funny. We'd appreciate it. Let's be blunt. Yeah, we know what you're doing tonight. That's okay, man. You say it best. Green is from the earth, okay? And if what you're doing doesn't hurt anyone, it doesn't bother me, you're okay in my book. All right, um, addiction, detachment, April 20th. Addiction is a family disease, but we could only change ourselves. Med many of us come from damaged families. At times, the insanity that reigns among our relatives feels overwhelming. Sometimes we feel like packing our bags and moving far, far away. We pray that our family will join us in recovery, but to our great sadness, this does not always happen. Sometimes, despite our best efforts to carry the message, we find that we cannot help those who we hold most dear. We have found that when we stop trying to settle the problems of family members, we give them room they need to work things out in their own lives. By reminding them we are not able to solve their problems for them, we give ourselves the freedom to live our own lives. Often the best thing we can give our loved ones is the example of our ongoing recovery. For the sake of our family, sanity, and our own, we must let our relatives find their own ways to recover. Today, I will seek to work my own program and leave my family in the care of my higher power. And that's a really important one. They tell us a lot that, you know, just because we, the addict, get recovered doesn't mean that our, our family gets recovered. Um, a lot of times they don't have a source. They don't. They don't have um, a way to get recovered. They don't know where to start. And we have to remember that, you know, yes, we damaged our own lives, but we we did a lot of damage to our family's lives too, you know, and that's not something that they can easily get over. Um, I know that my sister, my woo sister, which, you know, I think maybe that was an unfair statement. My sister is a really strong woman and um, she's someone that I, I um, have a lot of admiration for. Um, I think she's an amazing mom. I, I, I am, I love that she has her core group of friends. Um, I, I think that um, she's an outstanding role model. And if I could be, you know, even a tenth of the woman that she is, um, I'd be really fortunate. She's, she's really a great woman. Um, anyways, I know that she's been able to use resources. She's tried Al-Anon, you know, she's educated herself on the disease of addiction and that's really helped, um, you know, really helped our relationship. Whereas my mother, you know, she likes to um, kind of not ignore it, but she just wants it to be better. You know, she doesn't want to process some of the feelings and emotions that um, it, it, and some of the harm that my addiction has caused her, um, whether it's just her own stress or the stress that she has with the rest of the family or if it's the stress that she has with her husband due to my actions, my addiction. Um, you know, and I have to remember just because I, I come here to Florida, you know, and, and work the program and get recovered doesn't 
mean that when I go back home, everything's going to be okay. My family is still the same. They still have their own issues. They still, you know, like to drink some, you know, quite a bit sometimes at family functions. You know, that's not, that's not going to fix itself, you know, and I have to remember that now that I'm recovered, I can't push this new way of life on them. You know, it's not my job to come in and be like, oh man, you're being really prideful. You know, your character defects are flaring. You know, that's not my job. That's not my place. Um, so sometimes I just have to take it one step at a time with them. You know, the first time I went home was July of 2018. So almost a year ago was the first time I went home. And there was a big discussion on my getting a car. And I was mad. I was so mad. I got upset at the dinner table. I raised my voice. And I um, felt exactly as I did when I was using. My emotional sobriety level was rock bottom. I was not practicing any of my principles. I wasn't, you know, um, acting any way that I found acceptable. And... Um, and it wasn't fair, and I have to remember that my family is exactly the same. They're going to communicate the same as they did before. You know, they're going to act the same as they did before, and that's fine because it's not them who needed to change. It, it was me, you know, and so I just have to make sure I can hold my head up high, you know, stand by my principles, stand by my beliefs, and stand by my decisions, and then put the action and the effort behind them to show that I'm serious about that, you know, and that's what I want. That's how I want to come across. I want to come across as a woman of integrity and grace and substance, you know, someone who can adopt a dog and care for it properly. Someone who can own a car and have it insured and take it for an oil change and make sure I have gas all the time. You know, uh, I want to be seen as a woman with responsibilities who can uphold those responsibilities because that's not something I could have done in the past. Um, but if anything, recovery is about a new journey, about rediscovering yourself and about really molding yourself and your life to the way you want it to be, the way God originally intended for it to be. <clears throat> Anyways, the dog is a stray. He doesn't have a name. He's probably six or seven years old. Pure boxer. And it's my responsibility to name him. So of course I'm asking everyone else what I should name him. My mom had just sent me a text and she said to name him Boxer. And I kind of like that. It's very simple, very sweet. Anyways. I'm gonna call it a night. Guess what? I work brunch in the morning. I'm so psyched. I haven't worked since Thursday and I get to start it off with a brunch shift. I'm sure it should be very entertaining. Um, and it's also Easter. So I'm either gonna get a bunch of young kids who are getting loaded because they don't have to see their families or I'm getting a bunch of families who hopefully will eat and leave really quickly. Anyways, guys. Have a good night. Love you.